Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be three looks, three palettes, all about Ensley Rain. So I have the Lands of Enchantment palette, I have the Cold Moon palette, and I have the Groovy Gardens palette. So I'm going to be talking about each palette individually, inserting in some swatches, going over the looks that I did with these palettes, and then at the end, talking about Ensley Rain as a whole, what I think of them, their formula, etc. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't yet. And there's a lot of information to go over, so let's just get started. All right, so I will have timestamps just in case you want to skip around for one palette or another, you're not interested in all three. I also have all the makeup that I'm wearing listed in the description box, but I'm just gonna jump right in. The first palette that I played with was a Groovy Garden. Now, looking at this palette, it's not my typical color story. I tend to like more neutral leaning cool tones, and this is a little bit more warm tone, but it does have like an element of neutralness. It's not overly just orange red so I decided to go for it these top shades specifically reminded me of the cozy cabin from simply posh cosmetics and I really really enjoy that palette so that's why I decided to pick it up I'm going to throw out my swatch photo here there are 21 shades in this palette it's quite large so I did separate the mattes versus the shimmers for my swatches I did that with all three palettes because there was no way I was going to be able to fit all the swatches on there and I thought that would be a good way to see it. But my first impression of this palette when I received it versus just seeing it online, you know, some of these shimmers, I was a little bit worried that they were going to be pretty similar here. They did look different in my swatch. So I play with, I think, two of the three. But let's just get started with my looks on the Groovy Garden palette. This was the first palette that I played with, so it was a little bit of my tester palette. And for the first look, I decided to first start with kind of like the peachy rose shade. So I'm starting with Marvy. It's kind of like a mid-tone rose. And I'm putting that in my crease. And I'm putting that a little bit lower than maybe I normally would on my transition shade as well as the lower lash line because I'm gonna go dark to light. So then I'm gonna take Free Love and I'm gonna blend out the edges there and just bring it up. I wanted to see how much these shades can really blend and give me that gradient that I'm looking for. I try not to spend too much time with the matte because the shimmer is really the star of the show in these palettes, but I still wanted there to be some variety in the depth. I'm then taking Babe, which is like a dark, plummy, leaning purple, but it's still got that pink in there to darken up my outer corner. I am gonna use two shimmers for this look. So I'm starting with Lava Lamp, which is a red with like a black base. I actually liked this shade a lot more than I anticipated. It really is like lava. And then I took Jazzed and I put that primarily like two thirds all over my lid. I do just like a lighter shimmer on my lid overall. And to highlight the inner corner, I used Moonchild. I did get quite a bit of fallout with that shade. You can see right there that I'm kind of having to press it in. I did not use a glitter glue though, so that is kind of my fault. Going back in with Babe to just kind of thicken up my lash line. Not really use it as a liner, but more just to make my lashes stand out more. That's all I did for that look. I really enjoy that jazz shade. It's very deceiving in pan. It's much more sheer and translucent, and I really just overall enjoyed my first look with this palette. Look number two, like I said, I wanted to try out the green shimmers. So this is gonna be primarily a green look. I'm starting off with grass, which is the mid-tone matte green in this palette, doing the same method, applying it just kind of lower in my crease as well as my lower lash line, because then I'm gonna take Sage Serenity. That is the lightest green matte in this palette, and I'm gonna blend that out upper and lower lash line just to start to give a really good gradient. These mattes blend really nicely. I had no problem with the mattes whatsoever. And I'm going to deepen up the outer corner with Peace, which is the darkest kind of greeny 
grass shade in this palette. I actually really enjoy the tone of this green. It's not too dark. It still shows up green and I like that a lot. I used the Shimmer Retro. That was the first green kind of shimmer I tried in this palette and I put it all over the lid so I could really see what this looks like. Very chunky, very fallout. I did not use the glitter glue again and I still use Moonchild just like look number one in the inner corner. I am gonna use the darkest matte, which is Dig It. That is like a very rich, deep, chocolatey brown, and I'm gonna line my lower lash line. I'm not doing a wing, anything like that. Really just want to let the shimmer be the standout of this eye look. It's just to thicken up my lashes, and that's about it. So after that, I just applied mascara. That's my finished look. This is the most green shimmer of the three shimmers that I would say in this palette. The other two lean a little bit more bronze, but we'll go over that in a little bit. Look number three, I'm going to go for more of the browns with the greens. So I'm starting with Good Vibes. This is like a very dark mustard shade and it's really just the same method over and over. So in my transition on the lower lash line, blending that out with the shade Bliss. And I really like that shade. I'm glad that they include some really light creams in this palette. A lot of the times with indies, you don't get like those staple just cream shades. And it really worked out for this palette to help with blending a lot, at least for me. So I liked having that. I'm then going to go in with Earthy Amber. This is more of that orange shade, kind of terracotta, and I'm using that to blend out and deepen up the outer corner, really just working with those browns, trying to add as much visual impact as I can without just the shimmer. Then for this shimmer, I'm using Vintage Vibes, and I did learn my lesson and use a glitter glue. So you'll see there I'm applying the glitter glue. Vintage Vibes is a perfect name for it. It is like a greeny brown. The browns were perfect to pair with it. It went really well. I still had fallout, less fallout, but it was at least less fallout than before. And then I'm just kind of going back in, re-intensifying my mattes. I didn't find my outer corner deep enough, so I went in with Dig It to kind of deepen it up even more and have it like how I wanted. Then I added mascara. I did not add any kind of liner for this look, just mascara, and that is the third and final look. So like I said, this was the first of the three Ensley Rain palettes that I tried, kind of just getting my feet wet, figuring out what I like, dislike about their palettes as a whole. And what I discovered is the fallout <laughs> with these shades. A lot of these shimmers are very, very textured. Basically every single one, except for Trippy, this is kind of more of a smooth multi-chrome here. And it is very messy. You need to use a glitter glue. You need to do your eye makeup first. For the video, I wasn't going to do that, but they are very, very textured. Some of the hardest shimmers I've worked with. Terra Moons has some of these very textured shimmers as well. And it just, I'm noting it because some people might find it just a little bit too cumbersome to have in a palette here and it might not be worth it because you are also paying a premium price for these special shimmers. After that though, I liked all three looks. I'm really happy they included these two shades here, maybe a little bit, you know, we could have done with just this one or just this one, but it really does help the palette and blend it out. These mattes here show up a lot lighter on the eye. You can really build them up. They don't show up true to pan right away, but you can build them up to show up true to pan, which is my favorite type of matte. There was no kick up with these. It wasn't very powdery. They are fairly dry mattes, but I found them very easy to work with and overall happy I picked this up. After that, I decided to go with Cold Moon. This was the one I was looking forward to the absolute most. I just, it took my breath away when I saw this palette and the color story here. It is a cool tone, wintry dream. 
plus just the shades they chose on top of that. I lusted after this palette. I'm going to throw up my swatch photos. This one's a little bit different where you don't have all the mattes together and then the shimmers kind of in the middle row. It is half and half split with shimmers and mattes. I like that. Just I wish it was a little bit more cohesive like Groovy Gardens. I get the feeling that Ensley Rain's trying to find their just place as far as their branding. They're trying different things, seeing what works, which is totally fine. But I like the layout of Groovy Gardens more than I like the layout of this. It's more aesthetically pleasing to my eye. It's easier for me to find looks than something like this. But let's just start going over all the looks that I did with this palette, starting with look number one. For this look, I had to start off with the purple mauves. I just had to. It's part of what sold me on the palette. I started with Catmint, which is more of a mid-tone purple mauve, putting that in the transition area. And then I'm going to blend it out with Orithia. Hopefully I'm saying some of these shade names right, but just creating that gradient, taking it as high as I wanted. It was still a little bit dark for me, so I ended up blending it out more with Maja, which is like the cool toned cream in this palette. Really, really handy, really helpful to have in here. It kind of just gave me more of that blend and lightened up the look just like I was wanting. I wanted to use Garnet as the deepening up outer corner shade because that's the dark purpley red in the palette. Garnet's definitely an appropriate name for it versus the other cool tone browns that there were in. I'm also adding that dark Garnet to the lower lash line and I'm gonna blend that out with Orithia. Just going dark to light, I find that that was the best method for this palette to go the opposite of what I'm used to. I learned my lesson. I'm gonna apply NYX Glitter Glue before going in with Saturnalia really pretty just shifty lilac purple to gold kind of shade. I like that one a lot. I put it on about two thirds of my lid and then I deepened up the outer corner with Borealis. This is more of like a true purple, majorly purple. It still has shifting qualities in it and that's going to bring in the most purple for this palette. After I applied that shade, I kind of wanted a little bit more depth in the outer corner. It's weird, like sometimes the gradient's not too much, but sometimes I want more. So I ended up going in with Mother's Night. I added a black wing liner for this look, mascara, and that finished up this look. I like the, the two shimmers, but I kind of wish I had only used one. Look two is going to be more of a gray blue look. So I'm starting with Cold Moon, the mid-tone blue gray shade, adding that in my transition. I'm also going to add that on my lower lash line there, just kind of create a base. That's really what I'm using this for. Then I'm going to take the deepest gray, which is Rebirth. And this is more of like a true slate gray, in my opinion. And I'm adding that because I noticed I just lacked a little bit of depth. I was always going back in to add more depth. So I started with Rebirth to really just build that up more before going in with the lightest gray, which is Winter Solstice. And it's a very light gray, leaning on a cream, just like a hint of gray in there. So I really liked that. I added my NYX Glitter Glue to then go in with my shimmer. I started with Snow Crystal and I tried to use a brush. Typically I am a shimmer finger applier, but I wanted to see how it worked with a brush. It did not go well. You can see the fallout just raining down. It really doesn't stick to the brush because it's so textured and it kind of messes it up in the pan as well. I just overall didn't like it. I had to keep dipping in, keep pressing. I found I had more control with my finger, but then I took Storm Fairy, put that on the outer part of my corner. This is more of a true blue, just like the first look. This one doesn't shift as much. It's more of just a sparkly blue where Snow Crystal has more shiftiness to it. I tight lined with black, added mascara, and that was the rest of this look. For blue, I actually really enjoyed it. My third and final look for this palette, I wanted to play with some shades that I hadn't used yet. So I started with Winter Rose, definitely like the warmest matte in the palette, I would say, but still cool toned overall. Applied that in the crease, blended it out with Maja, the cream shade. 
I started to go a little bit lighter and then I ended up taking Mother's Night, which is that rich brown neutral chocolate shade. I really like this one. It builds so well. It's so easy to work with. And I apply that to the outer corner as well as the lower lash line to just add some depth. I find this shade really easy to control. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Added my NYX glitter glue and then I took Aurora, which is the bright, punchy, textury, flaky pink shade. And I applied that all over the lid. I opted for one shimmer, maybe could have played with some more, but I really wanted to go in and just let that textured shimmer shine. When it's a textured shimmer, I like to do a one shimmer look. I applied a little bit more of Mother's Night to just blend it out, make sure I liked my blend. I actually went in with Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk liner, kind of like a burgundy liner, just add that to my upper lash line, added mascara, and that was it for my third and final look. So being that this was the palette that I was most excited for, I had high, high hopes for this. And I will say the mattes I love. I love the depth of the mattes, the tones, the coolness without being too cool. Sometimes people think cool tones and they just go like full on gray and it's not flattering on the eyes. These are flattering cool tone colors on the eyes. I just had a lot of trouble and this was the second palette I tried. So I'd already tried the textured shimmers in Groovy Gardens and I was starting to get a little frustrated with how many textured shimmers were in here and how hard it was to really work with them. Now, I've used these palettes off camera as well, just not just the nine looks you're seeing. I tried some of these textured shimmers doing my eyeshadow before doing my foundation and I still had a ton of fallout that was hard to get off. They really stick to your skin and you can't just brush it off. That's the hardest thing I have with these palettes and I'll get more into that in my final thoughts. Let me try not to jump ahead of myself. There are some smooth shimmers here just like in Groovy Garden you have some of the more um, just smoother shimmers, but they're not as fun. They obviously, they don't jump out in your face like these textured shimmers do, which is my fault for not reaching for them. But like, why would you not want to reach into this shade? Like it's stunning to look at. And this is not against Enly Rains because it's just a textured shadow in general, but execution wise, they're tough to work with. They just are. They also kind of like really dig into the pan, create fallout. You have to be careful with a brush. I just wasn't starting to love these textured shimmers as much as I wanted to, and it was making the palette overall hard to use. But let's now go into the third and final palette, which is the Lands of Enchantment. Now, this palette is the only palette of the three I'm talking about that has a mirror, and it has round pans instead of square. So this is what I'm talking about when I say I feel like Ensley Rain is trying to find their footing. All three palettes, you can remove the pans. I really like that. But I will say like if I was to remove and rearrange color stories, I wouldn't be mixing these with the square pans. Maybe that's just me and how much I don't like how that looks. It's not pleasing to my eye. It feels too chaotic like that, but I would prefer that their pans were just the same across the board. After that though, I love this color story. I'm going to throw up my swatch photo. Just like Cold Moon, you know, you have the mattes and the shimmer scattered. It kind of goes matte shimmer, matte shimmer. It's not bad, but I still prefer the Groovy Garden layout more. I don't know how you would do that with this layout because it's just more square rather than rectangle but this is what it looks like and you kind of go from a gradient of light to dark. I actually do like that in this palette. That helps me out to kind of see the dark mattes all together and then the light mattes all together. So I was also just the color story on this. The artwork is beautiful, stunning. So let's get into my three looks with the Lands of Enchantment palette. This look was pretty simple, but I'll tell you right now, out of the nine looks, this was by far my favorite. I started with Utopia, kind of like a grape matte purple, put that in the outer corner as well as the lower lash line. Again, working just dark to light, I find that to be the easiest. And then I'm gonna blend out that Utopia shade with Majestic. One of my favorite mattes out of all three palettes as well, just my perfect favorite color, purple. I love that shade. And then I'm adding it to the lower lash line, blending out the Utopia on the lower lash line. Going in with my NYX Glitter Primer, 
like I said, I learned my lesson. I'm trying my best to make these shimmers work the best that I can for me. And I'm going to go in with the shade Cosmic Flow. Stunning, shifty. This shade is not texture. This palette actually has less textured shades than all of the palettes that I was talking about. So maybe that's why I just got along with this palette more. But this shade was so stunning. I'm just kind of going in perfecting my blend here with Utopia, making sure I like it. I use Divine Light for the inner corner. It's like an iridescent pink to purple shade. Really pretty, just tied in really well. Kind of just grading it, blending it into the look. I added a black liner to my top lash line a little bit, added mascara, and that was the look. I loved it so much. This shimmer shade just knocked my socks off. For my second look, I wanted to play more with like the blue greens. These are pastel. I first started with Lost World. It's kind of a robin egg blue almost very unique shade but I did really have to build that shade up a lot more than I was expecting probably the shade I have the most the hardest time with in this palette I'm blending it out with paradise which is more of a green and then I added that to the lower lash line to really make the green pop rather than that robin egg blue I just like the green a little bit better it's more minty I went in with my NYX Glitter Primer before going in with my Shimmer, which is Shattered Stars. This is a very unique blue. It does have some purple in it, so that's why I decided to use it. Again, this is not one of the textured shimmers. It's one of the more smoother shimmers, so it was a little bit easier just using this shade overall. And then I'm going to add Faye to the inner corner. This is an iridescent with like a green to blue shift, so it kind of just matched the look. I used black liner on my top lash line again, added mascara, and that was it for the second look. Now for the third and final look, I kind of had this idea in my head and I wanted to see if I could execute it. So this is a little bit different for me. I took the shade Enlightened and I'm really putting that all over the lid. I wanted to just create a soft, wash of purpley kind of pink pastel all over my lid. You're going to see why in just a second, but I'm just taking that, applying it to the lower lash line. It didn't build up as much as I wanted it to. I probably should have gone in with a white base or something with this look, but I was already in too deep and I don't have a white base to be honest. I took Majestic and I added that to my crease socket to just add a little bit of contouring in the crease and kind of make my eyes look a little bit more deep set. That's what I like. And then here's where we get spicy. I took the KVD tattoo liner and I'm going to try my best to show you me attempting to make a wing, but I'm going to be honest, I kind of gave up doing that on camera and had to get really close to my mirror and do it off of camera. So here I am just trying to apply a black wing best as I can because I wanted to take Light Language, which is an iridescent shade with the most glowy blue shift I have ever seen. This shade looks like it glows in the dark without actually glowing in the dark. That's how bright and punchy this shade is. I had to try a few different brushes to get it on that black liner like I wanted it to. And, you know, I liked this look. I kind of wish maybe I had gone in with a white liner, but overall, like I'm glad I stepped out of my box. I added mascara and that was it. I think it turned out kind of cool. Now the third look didn't turn out quite like I expected, but I learned a few things that maybe I'm gonna try for the next time. This light language though shade, this one here, I just, I can't talk enough about it. Like I said, it just glows and I really wanted to like, I mean, look at that. I really wanted to make that like the star, but over a black base, it just kind of turned into a royal metallic blue liner and it wasn't giving the same effect. If you have any experience doing a look like that, like maybe give me some tips. I would love tips because I'm still new at like experimenting like that. You can kind of see what I lean more towards, but those are my three looks. This palette 
definitely turned me around from the cold moon, but that's because there's just less textured shades. You do still have some like lunar light here. Star seed is a textured one, true essence, but that's it. There's more of these smoother shimmers, which is what I wish the other two palettes had as well. I don't mind a textured shimmer. I don't want it to sound like I wish there were zero. I like them. They're beautiful. They're stunning. But when it's more than less of the shimmers. I, I just wish it was flipped. Now, like I said, I'm wearing this palette today. So I went in with Enlightened as well as, what did I use? Oh, I used Edge of the Night here, this really dark blue shade. I blended it out with Enlightened, kind of just opposite ends of the spectrum here. And then I used Moon Magic on the outer corner, very like mermaid shade. And I used star seed all over the lid. So it's very blue. I like it. It's a little bit different. I definitely went pretty dark and smoky for this one. But this was the Lands of Enchantment. Surprised me the most because I thought this was going to be my least liked palette and it actually turned into my most liked. Groovy Gardens, we'll kind of just go into my thoughts on all three. Groovy Gardens is a more staple palette, but for a pastel colored palette, it kind of moved my Delicious Delight from Cosmic Beauty. It bumped, it took the place of that one because that's really the only pastel palette that I have other than Spring Dragon. And this definitely took its place. Now, as far as all three palettes and the brand goes, I think I touched on a lot of my points just about the textured shadows. These are very pricey palettes. I mean, they go for around $70. There are affiliate codes you can use. I have an affiliate code. It's just Melissa. It's always listed in the description box so you can save 10% off your order. It helps a little bit, but it's not helping that much. These for sure are investments and you really want to like every aspect of the palette if you're going to buy it, in my opinion, spending that kind of money on a palette. I do like all of these. I like them a lot. There's just maybe like one or two tweaks I would do, like maybe switch out one of these green shades in this one. In this one, I wish there were more of the smooth shimmers rather than majority of the textured shimmers. But this palette is stunning. It's beautiful. I still can't get over it. It's still my favorite color story out of all my Ensley Rain palettes because I also have the Midwinter Dream palette. And then this one was also just a surprising find. Overall, I really like the brand. My only just con is that I hope in the future they kind of stick to same, same. Even these two palettes aren't the same size. The Groovy Gardens is bigger and I just don't like that. I like it when the brand kind of has all the same thing going and they really like stick with a the theme. So that's really my only just call out for them. I do just want to touch on the controversies with Ensley Rain because I don't want to have comments about it. I know that they use AI art in their palettes here and there are some issues around that. I'm not going to like dive too deep, but I at least wanted to mention if you weren't aware and you're watching this interested in Ensley Rain, if you're against like AI art, this might not be the brand for you. She has come out and made several statements on her Instagram. If you want to go read them, just touching on them and why and what she's doing to change that. So I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm just providing the information here. But overall, like I'm, I'm really happy with these palettes. I think it's just a little tough because I'm trying these palettes at the same time that I'm trying my Unearthly palettes that I also purchased last year. And I'm just liking Unearthly like one point more. Unearthly is like a 10 out of 10, super recommend. Ensley Rain's like a nine. There's just some people that I don't think will like these, whereas I find it hard to find someone who wouldn't like Unearthly's formula, their shimmers. They just, as long as they like the color story, I think they'll like Unearthly's formula, regardless of who they are. With Ensley Rain, I wouldn't say the same thing. I think it's a very particular person who's going to like this. You have to like working a little bit more on your eye looks. You have to, you 
you know, like doing your eyeshadow first, using a glitter glue, using all the things. These are not quick, easy eye looks. They're very impactful. They're very beautiful eye looks, but I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. So that's kind of just my thoughts on Ensley Rain as a whole. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you own any Ensley Rain palettes? Are they on your wish list? Because they are just more on the pricey side here. Hopefully you found the swatches helpful. The looks provided some inspiration, but this is where I'm going to leave you all. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.